This is the Business of Apps podcast, bringing you actionable insights from the leaders of the global app industry and the world's fastest growing apps. You can find more app news, data and analysis over at businessofapps.com. Welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. On this show, we invite app industry professionals to cover various topics, and we promise to do our best to keep it both insightful but brief. In this episode, we have Franz Gonzalez, head of BizDev at Propeller Ads. Franz, welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Cool, Rance. Thank you for coming. So, uh, believe it or not, we're uh, finishing the October of 2023. It's almost over. Oh, Halloween yeah. is just a week away. Thanksgiving and Blank Friday are coming. In other words, we're closing this year. Uh, so, we decided to take a look at what mobile user acquisition and monetization techniques worked this year. And Rance is here to give us a tour. But first, as we always do on this show, Renz, let's talk about you first. Uh, Tell us about yourself and your background in tech. Wow, sure. Well, again, you know, thanks for having me. And it's a very exciting topic to to tackle today. Uh, As you said, my name is Renz, and I've been in the industry, the advertising industry, for close to a decade. Uh, I started my career in in in-app, actually. So it's quite relevant for me to talk about, you know, different kind of aspects of in-app advertising and and especially for app developers, right? So I started in in in-app and then in 2018, I joined Propeller and it's been quite a fruitful journey ever since. Cool. Uh, Speaking of Propeller ads, uh, give me a quick sketch of the company. What do you guys propel? Any affiliation with JPL? Are you launching rockets? (laughs) Any affiliation? (laughs) Well, stay tuned. <laughs> okay, you got it. But, <laughs> all right. I mean, in terms of propeller ads, of course, you know, we propelled into uh, a company that's been 12 years old in the industry. We are quite dominant. And uh, for sure, uh, many, many in the industry, advertisers, agencies, affiliates know us as a global multi-source ad network, right, that actually offer unique sources for our advertisers. That's the, the main uh, objective and the main goal and purpose of uh, propeller ads is to really provide that quality traffic, top-notch traffic for our advertisers alike, and also for our publishers who are working with us uh, through our exclusive partner or monetization partner. Uh, and yes, I guess that's uh, that's the mini story and background of propeller ads. Of course, we are part of the ecosystem uh, of the ad tech holding, which I mean, I guess we can talk about that in uh, on another podcast. But uh, yeah, it's it's quite huge, and we we've had. So many advancements, uh, you know, so many projects that have become uh, their own entities throughout the years. Gotcha, Rance. Okay, so first let's dive into mobile user acquisition. Right. Um, so you guys have been running lots of campaigns for this year for your clients. So you're in a good position to see what ad formats and what channels did work this year, the ones that perform well. So what are these channels and can you give us a few quick examples? Uh, sure. I mean, let's talk more broadly throughout the industry. You know, um, I mean, many advertisers, many app marketers, of course, they've utilized, uh, you know, the social media and the power of social media. So I would say that definitely really has been, you know, quite a uh, um, a, a prospect for everybody and paved the way into different types of marketing. You know, influencer marketing is also really, really trending. So I would say for 2023 and thus far, um, social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you name it, right? I mean, you, you see a lot of these uh, advertisements everywhere, but uh, for me, at least predominantly, of course, I see, uh, you know, all of these social media really being used to their advantage, right? Uh, their algorithms and the way that you could reach the audiences uh, that you want to reach. Um, also, I would say in terms of, let's say, if you're a marketer, if you're an app developer that has um, an, an iOS app, right? Uh, app mm-hmm. search ads, I've seen that really quite being capitalized as well when it comes to really putting your app, you know, up through the rankings, uh, that's very, very important for you to be seen, to be visible. So that's not just about organic reach, but also in terms of like really getting into uh, those first top five um, recommendations on you know the app store. 
Um, I would say also push notifications for sure. We've seen a lot of our advertisers on our side that have utilized the power of push notifications when it comes to natively reaching to their target audience. And of course, different types of uh, interest audiences, I guess, uh, that are also very important. Uh, but those are the main channels or ad units that I've seen that have trended throughout 2023 so far. And uh, ad formats wise, I would imagine video format is still the king short form oh, yeah. uh, like reels and tiktok right you, you see the same absolutely you know video it's still it's still quite uh on top you know uh when it comes to the content and the way that we you know show the ads to the users for sure when it comes to social those are the most dominant ones of course on instagram for example you would use reels you would use stories uh and uh videos interstitials right you know when it comes mm -hmm. to in-app i mean we see a lot of banners still but i would say uh, gamification when when you're in that category of apps as well is also pretty much uh, um, evergreen, right? When you want to really engage and engage and have a really high user retention, a lot of these apps really use um, interstitials or you know uh, rewarded app uh, rewarded videos. I see. Okay. Um, now, what is the cutting edge of improving user acquisition campaign efficiency? This is never ending battle. Um, mm -hmm. Every time I ask this, this question, there's always a different answer because the channels are not static. They're been changing right. all the time. They're going through the saturation point. Some things that were working yesterday, a week ago, a month ago, do not work right now. So how are we, how are we improving the UA campaign's efficiency this year? All right. I mean, you will have different answers to this. I mean, it really depends on the channel, depends on the vertical, depends on um, um, the traffic source as well, mm -hmm. right? So there's no definitive answer. But to me and my own experience with, you know, working with different types of brands, app developers, I see that when it comes to the efficiency of their campaigns, it really has to go into the hyper-targeting things. It's more segmenting the audiences. Uh, I mean, you know, for a fact, you know, we've had some difficult situations throughout the year, uh, but uh, I would say that a lot of advertisers are adapting, which is, uh, you know, I guess one of the main uh, factors that we need to really take into account is the adaptability of things. So I would say combining, let's say, the power of app store monetization for me, I mean, really getting your app up there. I mean, when it comes to the campaigns that, you know, when it comes to launching, uh, you know, branding or visibility or in a performance based kind of um, uh, campaigns. Uh, also for me, uh, when it comes to hyper targeting that we talked about, uh, segmenting the audiences and even going into ad networks that actually have distributed, but also really very defined types of audiences, right? Interest audiences, behavioral wise as well. So mm -hmm. those really played a lot of, um, uh, really good conversion rates for our advertisers on our end. But in general, I see a lot of advertisers in the industry doing this. Uh, and um, what else? I would say also perhaps something that I've seen recently when it comes to really getting user acquisition uh, through the roof is uh, playable interactive ads. I don't know if you've seen those. Like before you actually install an application, I've seen mm -hmm. this. Uh, with games a lot, you know, like before you actually install, you have this kind of ad that you interact with and kind of uh, go through the game a little bit for about, I don't know, for about, for about a minute. And I think that has a lot of potential to be used uh, into different other verticals as well. You know, when it comes to a user really having a higher intent on installing something. I mean, it's not just about the installing, you know this for a fact. I mean, we say it over and over again, but it, once the install is done, what you do after that is what plays the Adders. bigger role, right? When it comes to yeah. user retention, yeah. So I, I guess the, that's one of the things that really got me excited throughout the year. Uh, it, it's been, you know, quite uh, dominant for for a few years, but I think that that will have different other roads to to follow through. You know, when it comes to the, the potential of it. No, I don't think I've uh, had an experience of seeing this, this kind of advertising before the game being installed. I, think, I guess primarily because I don't, I'm not a gamer. I, I don't play games that much. <laughs> I, I grab new apps well, on, on occasion where you know, there's a specific need, but you know, for the most part, it's about utilities, uh, um, right. some guides and stuff like this, not games per se, 
but I do see why it should work because people are in the in the right mood. Uh, he's he or she wants to play some game, and it comes kind of a natural uh, for that experience to introduce right. the uh, ad in this format, playable format. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Now, um, I remember this big report which uh, surveyed thousands and thousands of developers years ago and uh, I guess a couple of iterations of the same report and every time there was only smile only minor part a tiny uh, portion of that huge crowd were, were hobbyists people who were in the app business not for money not for making a profit so for the majority are obviously to generate profit so App developers and marketers are always on the quest to monetize their apps and games better. So what would you suggest them to be focused on right now? Of course, um, there are differences in a lot of categories of types of apps, right? I mean, you mentioned utilities, uh, finance, uh, you know, different types of apps with different types of characteristics as well. And as you said, for a fact, there are apps that it's not predominantly about the, mon the internal monetization of things. Uh, for sure, that's the end goal, right? I mean, you build an app for a purpose, but with uh, that entails making money out of it. I mean, that's the whole ecosystem of everything, I guess, not just when it, when it comes to apps, but um, of course there are subscription-based kind of apps, but with monetization, I mean, for sure, there are different types of ad networks. Ad networks. Uh, I mean, AdMob, you know, obviously, uh, everybody knows about that. But there are different other ad networks with different, um, let's say, uh, offerings. And uh, with monetization, it really has to do with the balance of user experience, right? I mean, we don't really want to have, especially when you have um, in-app advertising, mm -hmm. uh, we don't really want to have a lot of ads bombarding the users with different types of, uh, you know, uh, ad units. So it really comes down to something more seamless for the users. And I would say, because I mentioned about um, traffic monetization, right, on our side, Monetag is our exclusive partner when it comes to that traffic uh, um, exclusivity and, uh, of course, offering our advertisers uh, the top-notch quality traffic that they're getting. But uh, surely uh, with Monetag, um, anyone who has an app or, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, different types of verticals, doesn't really matter in this case. If you have an app and you want to monetize it, uh, I suggest that you use different, uh, you know, different types of ad networks and see exactly what works for you in this case. So when it comes to Monetag, um, they can help them out. They can help ad, um, to app developers out with, uh, you know, let's say push notification, for example, or interstitial ads. To, mm -hmm. to really make it uh, profitable for them and also for sure having a more seamless uh, user journey. Got you. All right, now comes this question, which uh, I don't think I can miss uh, in any conversation these days. So um, how do you see the role of generative AI to acquire new users uh, for the app and uh, to monetize the app? What are your thoughts? Oof. Uh, this has been quite a huge conversation with different other, you know, other partners and and and, and friends in the industry. But we came down to for sure uh, the advantage of generative AI with content creation. I guess that's that's on top there. But also, I thought of uh, you know creating a chatbot for an app. You know, all these kind of different tools and automations for somebody who already has a built app and be basically making it better and better for for user experience, right? So mm. I would say uh, content for sure, you know, when it comes to ad copy, creatives, banners, uh, you know, for a fact, you know, with ChatGPT, you can, you know, maneuver and, you know, kind of really play out with the text and have some inspiration. But I would say it's also about personalization, you know? Um, AI is great, but there's gotta be some kind of emotional factor to it. So I really am a fan of, um, you know, having your personal touch on things. And it doesn't matter, you know, it, when it comes to apps and, and the way that we can build uh, them on top of uh, AI, for example, I would still love to see some kind of personalization here and there. But yeah, I guess content creation, uh, AI powered uh, types of bots, um, and which are not new, but still really, really quite uh, uh, a good uh, prospect to see throughout the years. 
And I would say ad fraud as well, ad prevention. You know, that's also very important for, for advertisers and for, you know, for apps, uh, app marketers, app developers alike. Yeah, that's that's my hope, especially for the ad fraud prevention, because uh, the experience of the last a few a few years of uh, tracking what's going on with the fraud and the mobile uh, med campaigns and the picture is quite uh, dramatic. Um, the losses are coming up, uh, are, are are going up, and year over year and. It didn't feel like, it, at least before the uh, Journey of AI uh, came into play, uh, like there was any um, sort of bullet, probably Journey of AI or AI, sorry, in general, uh, can be that tool that will help us to combat mobile ad fraud. Um, probably not 100%, that's, that would be too great to be true, but at least uh, significantly to diminish the uh, damage that has been done for years for mobile industry. Oh yeah. Now, oh yeah. I mean, throughout yeah. the years, uh, with my experience in the app industry, uh, and now we've come a long way. We've come a long way, man. I mean, you know, I remember it was a wild, wild west. I'm not going to comment further on that, but uh, it was a wild, wild west. You know, when it comes to app promotion and generating installs, and it was just there was no battery. You know, there was no policy in place or anything like that. But now, you know, of course. There should be restrictions. There should be policies in place, and one of those measures uh, is, in my opinion, have become stronger and stronger throughout the years. Is ad prevention, uh, ad fraud detection, ad fraud prevention, ad fraud detection, and uh, I'm sure that you know with AI as well. I think that should also be something that could be integrated with that. So further and further, we're going to see more and more security for 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 everyone for for any kind of marketer out there. Yeah, like I'm not naive. I'm not uh, claiming that the side that is on this, like on the the other side, that is actually uh, being a business of <laughs> making money on fraud, will be just sitting and not using AI in their uh, <laughs> in their arsenal. But this is the game we're playing. It's not like there's no way out. We have to use every uh, tool we have in our disposal to help oh, yeah. businesses to actually thrive and uh, allocate their marketing budgets for actual advertising not wasting them absolutely all right finally uh, let's sum up what we just discussed and uh, give people some takeaways Ooh, takeaways all right 2023 2024 uh make sure to test out different other ad formats uh traffic channels for sure when it comes to ad uh marketing any type of ad type of app uh for sure there have been quite uh uh, some restrictions, right, uh, in 2023, but we're going to see more and more advancements, I believe, and I'm quite sure that, you know, this industry is not going to stop here. It's not going to stop anywhere. Uh, we just have to adapt to it. As we said, adaptability is the key here. Um, and also just ride the wave, ride the wave of generative AI. You know, it's it's not something against us. You know, uh, I, I love it. I love the whole uh, era of, uh, you know, ChatGPT AI and everything that you can create out of that. I don't know about you. You you, you look like you're, you're younger than I am, but <laughs> when it comes to my generation, we did not have any of these shit at all. I mean, I used to own like... Uh, uh, uh 3310 <laughs> when I was in high school so you know it's a different it's a different uh, era and uh I believe that we're just uh seeing the the beginning of it yeah definitely definitely uh let's hope for the better be optimistic and um um hope for the future where we will see only the positive or at least the positive side of AI will be prevailing and, you know, externalities will be minimal. What, about right. you, what do you think? I mean, what do you think? Oh. What do you think of, uh, let's say the negative side of things we've talked about, like how great it is, but yeah, you know, there's always the bad side of things. Let's, let's talk about that. I mean, sure thing. Um, there is a, you know, the, discussion about the externalities of the negative side of AI right now is been divided in two parts. One of them is kind of um, not immediate threat, something that may be looming five, seven, 10 years ahead, probably sooner, probably later. 
when we're talking about the next gen next and like you know three five seven uh iterations in the future for generative right. AI and what it will be capable of by that point um some people are like being afraid of generative AI become conscious I don't think I have any you know educated opinion on that uh but my um my worries are on the second part of this uh conversation which is more immediate problems when we have in this situation where generative AI is being used to create fake content and use it in the conflicts we can see it right now all over the world tech has been enjoying a uh, life of being not restricted for years and years since the dawn of google uh, before uh, but having uh, regulations to make it um, more safe to be able to combat this negative side will be great right. This is my take on, unfortunately, what's happening right now with um, using this this tech and not for the better, to put it mildly. Right, right, right. I mean, it, it's still something that's, uh, you know, uh, really benefiting the world, right? I mean, there's pros and cons in everything. Um, yeah. But I feel that when it comes to generative AI and whatever, you know, a tool can be used, um, you know, as long as we still have that human touch on things uh, and not letting things go way out of hand or uh, way out of our control um i think that everything should be should be quite controlled quite uh, you know um, measured in that kind of sense gotcha okay uh now i'm transitioning to the second part of the show where every guest who is uh, who is first time on this podcast, uh, get a chance to answer a few quick questions. This is my way of uh, letting the people who are listening to us, my guests, uh, to know them a little bit better. Uh, here we go. All right. So what smartphone do you have now? Uh, are you one of those people who are staying on one side of the equation, iOS or Android all the time, or going back and forth? Um, I probably had multiple devices throughout the years. I've started with an Alcatel when I was nine years old, like a little, a little tiny Alcatel phone with like a, an antenna. Uh, okay. I, I've I've used Android phones before. I uh, was really really quite happy with them. Uh, with them, uh, but now I'm using iPhone. Uh, I'm an iPhone fan at the moment. <laughs> okay, now uh, imagine for whatever reason you forgot your phone at home. You're out, and what would be the most missing feature for you uh, at that point? Uh, good question. I guess it would have to be my calendar. You know, <laughs> I, I'm sure you got a pretty hectic calendar yourself and schedule. Oh yeah, but for sure. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. You know, that's I, it could get a little hectic without it. So yeah, calendar. <laughs> got you. All right. So now, uh, now let's uh, not take a look at a crystal ball, but. Um, Let's see if uh, there's any feature, hardware, software on your iPhone, which you believe would be great to have to make it more capable for you. And it's not, not necessarily something trendy we're all here about, but probably something that you would like personally to be able to use on your phone. Hardware, software, doesn't matter. I would like to, I would like to play that snake on Nokia 3310 again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. But, All right. But, but listen, nostalgia. All, nostalgia. Nostalgia for me. I mean, I, I come from the, I'm an 80s, I'm a 90s kid, you know. Uh, but yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, we have everything at the moment, you know, when it comes to technologies, uh, when it comes to advancements, technical wise, both software and hardware. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, I love, I love the generation that we're living in right now where, everybody has access to this type of technology and having such a power device, you know, uh, in the palm of your hands, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy to me how, you know, we can utilize different types of um, tools to, to make our lives easier. So for me, at least I'm all for, I'm all for what good uh, technology can do. Uh, and I, as I said, as long as we have full control of things, I'm I'm very very excited about uh, what the future holds. Gotcha. Okay. Before I let you go, very very final question: How could people get in touch with you and get more information about what you do? 
Uh, right. So um, basically, everyone can contact me on uh, all my social media. So I have a I have a common link tree. So it's link tree slash runs Gonzalez. But uh, you know, I want to plug a little bit about Propeller Rides as well. Propellerrides.com. Uh, we're all over uh, social media as well. You know, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Telegram, LinkedIn. So you know, make sure to follow us, like us, share us, uh, all that. <laughs> Cool. Friends, thank you so much for coming on the show and spending time with us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. Bye. And that was Rans, Rans Gonzalez, head of BizDev at Propeller Ads. To listen to more episodes, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts. Just search for Business of Apps and you will find us easily. Remember, we release episodes on Mondays. So subscribe and you'll be able to get new episodes on your smartphone, tablet, or computer as soon as we release them. And please don't forget to leave us a review or comment on iTunes. It is highly appreciated. And all episodes will also be available on businessofapps.com. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Business of Apps podcast. For more, head on over to businessofapps.com.